Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Theo. Very evening, nice to else. have you again here with us. Absolute pleasure. Let's give a bit more time. Some more people are going to be following in. Nice. More and more people joining in. Good evening, everybody. Very happy to have you around in another webinar of Theo. We get to see consistency of the audience. Theo, that means that people are looking forward to hear the next things that you're going to have to say. So as I get to know that your time is valuable without any further delay, pen and paper in our hand and the stage is yours, Theo. Thank you so much, Alex, uh, for the introduction. Good evening, good evening, everyone. Good afternoon as well. Uh, so, guys, today our subject is time frame correlation. Now, um, to transit from a trader to a consistent trader, uh, I often see a, a, a period of um, a period that comes that traders they need to understand fundamentals, not news, but fundamentals of technical trading. And the time frame correlation, it's one of the most essentials, if not the most essential. So today we will deviate the time to go very deep into what is the time frame correlation and aspects around it. So before we start, as usual, our disclaimer, just to ensure that everyone's acknowledged that this content and this webinar is for general information only and is not intended to provide trading or investment advice or personal recommendations. Now, for those who join us for first time here, just allow me to take 30 seconds and introduce myself. My name is Theo. I run the Market Minds Mastery uh, Academy. It's an education mainly and um, an analysis academy. So uh, it's been more than 10 years, about 11, 12 years I'm in the industry. I hold the certificate as a financial technical analyst by a few different associations. Uh, the expertise comes in currency trading mainly. And uh, now we introduce the futures, of course. On a daily basis, besides the trading activity, I deliver market analysis. And it's something that I would like to show you guys. Just give me one second to bring this on. Here are the trading pit on our blog. If you just go on the website, you click here where it says tools. And on the blog section, you will see the market outlook all right if you click there every week uh we i create this content and we publish it every monday morning so when you start your training day you can read in a summary all the major news events that they will affect the the weekly the weekly markets I try to make them and write them in the most in the in a very very simple way, so you will be able to understand. You don't need to be an economist or something similar. Okay, then I analyze twelve, eleven, or twelve the most tradable currencies and instruments. Uh, here we use at the trading pit. Here you guys are using as well, and myself. Here is the Australian dollar, for example, daily chart that it shows all the levels. Uh, I use some moving averages and some indicators because that's how we do official technical analysis. So it's going to be relevant for you and you feel confident that it's from a valid source of information. Everything in a simple way written, explain you exactly what the chart shows and what do we expect and if the price move in, in either direction where we expect some reactions and pretty we had a pretty active week especially with the pound us dollar we took some trades from these levels that we did the analysis on uh, the weekend uh, another one usdchf usd japanese yen pound yen it's one of the currency pairs that uh, you guys trade a lot um, whenever there is a fibonacci or any other um, you know, or any other analysis i use it just to make it easier for you. On some indices, we spotted divergences. Uh, we use also some Bollinger Bands when they are applicable. Uh, this on the four hour time frames as well, when we, or when we find some uh, solid order blocks, I would like to point them out, like this one here, S&P 500, US 30, 
German 40 gold on the four hour time frame on the gold actually we took a trade yesterday from this area that we spotted on the four hour um, time frame and um, WTI another lucrative opportunity it was on the hourly time frame but in this area we expected the price to reverse and the Bitcoin okay so um, because I understand you may not be aware of uh, how good is this analysis not because I write it okay it's because I write it but no, it's it's actually good I'm joking it's a valid source of information and I'm sure it's gonna add significant value to your trading so make the effort and just uh, read it it's for your best interest okay so let's keep going today's agenda so we will explain what is the time frame correlation guys we will explain why it is essential in trading uh when to apply it strategy and rules that's important we will explain the strategy and we're going to give the rules one two three like we did on the previous webinar as well and uh, we'll show you the last couple of trades I took with the time frame correlation. The one was yesterday and the other it was, I think, last, last week. And uh, so what is time frame correlation, guys? Well, time frame correlation, it's a method we use for execution, okay? It's a method, it's a strategy. Time frame correlation, it helps us to, um, to time our entries better and it helps us to understand if the price will stop and potentially reverse from a level of resistance or from a level of support okay if it, or if it's going to um, penetrate now often here i see many traders when we do the coaching and we analyze their trades that they don't wait to for the price to tap into the area and then to take to decide if they're gonna take action or not okay now let's also explain what is not a time frame correlation guys time frame correlation is not a market tool analysis it's not a tool that we use to do analysis it's purely an execution strategy also the time frame correlation does not replace the higher time frame analysis like any uh, anything you get involved in life either it's a sport it's work it's uh, something you you do on a daily basis or often whenever there is a process there is a procedure we follow in order to decide if we're going to trade and what we're going to trade and how we're going to trade but in trading i often see people they bypass the higher time frame analysis because they think they spotted an opportunity on the execution time frame and that's what we're going to explain in a while and time frame correlation it's not applicable guys in all market conditions okay it's not applicable in all market conditions so why it is crucial to understand time frame correlation in trading because overall it will make you a better trader okay why and how it will create the art of patience to be patient nobody born and is a patient person by default okay we are all the same we are all humans and we have all the emotions running 24 7 but to develop trading patience it's an art and that comes with exercise so it comes with in 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 trading with time frame correlation of course oh, sorry about that. sorry let me just change something here uh yeah it's this one so yeah. do you guys still see my screen yeah perfect um it allows you to build trust in your trading plan because you have the rules guys you do a b c you don't looking at 
any point to, oh my God, what I'm going to do now? Uh, what is going on? So you're going to have rules to follow. And uh, it helps, of course, with discipline you need in trading. And the most important, guys, it helps you to stay focused only on trades you plant. Or in other, other words, it keeps you focused by not placing unplanned trades. We want to plan every single trade we made. And some people, you may wonder, oh my God, every single trade. Yes, guys, every single trade needs to be planned. Okay. Uh, guys, if you have any questions, please, please feel free to uh, post them on the chat and I can answer them as we go. Now, for high probability trades, guys, time frame correlation is best applicable during trending markets and when the price is at support or resistance. At support, we buy, resistance, we sell. Okay. Now, at this point here, to avoid any confusion, guys, I would like to make it clear. Often traders, when they see the price at support or at resistance, they always, they are convinced that the market will reverse and they place counter trend trade. Now, most of the times, yes, support and resistance, especially support and resistance, they've been tested at least two times. And we are going on the third and fourth time after that. Um, the validity is to be sub sub subjective and suspective, but at least on the second, third, and fourth time, it's where how we call the market is hot and the level is hot. So at this point, you must understand that the, every level of support and resistance, it will break at some point because if it doesn't break, it means a trend will never establish. So if the market moves upwards, here are the candles, and then it creates that swing high. I hope you understand what I mean by swing high. And then the market start moving bounced off and moves upwards. At this point here, guys, for an uptrend to be continued, the level of resistance, it has to be broken to the upside. It has to be taken out. So the buyers, they will try to push. Okay. Now, what will happen at this point here, we want to examine if we decided from the higher time frame to take any trades to the downside. And if yes, how we will approach the market. And then how we will manage the trade. I, I see traders all the time get into the uh, learn from YouTube or from any other sources, uh, from any other um, coaches to set and forget trades. At some point, yes, we understand that we have to let the market do its thing, but as we developed ourselves as skillful traders, we must start thinking and understanding what the market does and how can we uh, manage our trade for our best trading result. Okay, it's something that I will show you uh, in other webinars how to do that because it case by case, it's different and we just have some mar some clues from the market um, that they show us what to do and when to do it. Okay, um, but we will see that in another um, in another uh, webinar. Okay, so the rules: how to use time frame correlation to trade trends. If you want, please feel free to write this down. If you can memorize them, um, perfect. So first, first rule, guys, you must decide which will be your 
time frame that you do market analysis and we will always refer to this time frame as the HTF or the higher time frame. For example, for me, Theo, the trader, I use the daily chart. That's why I do that because that's how I resonate myself in trading. That's that's how I that's how I identify myself as trader. That's the time frame that um, that makes sense to me, and it uh, and I feel comfortable to base my trade based on that time frame analysis. Other traders they might use the four hour time frame as their higher time frame, or even the one hour time frame if they want to execute, let's say on a five minute chart, one minute chart, three minute chart, uh, whatever. But everyone has a different perspective of who they are as traders. So please feel free to use the higher time frame as the time frame that makes sense to you. When you draw a resistance or a support on that time frame, you must be firm and you must feel comfortable that, hey, price is at resistance, I'm going to sell it because I believe that this time frame represents the trade setup that I feel confident to, to trade. Okay, and that's important, guys, so, so important. Uh, often traders, they flip between time frames to do their analysis. If you get yourself flipping between time frames, where am I going to do my analysis? you have to get a step backward and and rethink and restructure what you are doing in the markets okay it means there is something missing there uh you lack of trust on the time frame and maybe the time frame doesn't resonate with uh, what you believe in trading that's important guys okay so for me, the daily chart and the examples I will show, they are based on the daily chart analysis. Now, on the lower time frame, we will use uh, the, the market data for execution. When I trade, I use personally the daily chart and I execute on the hourly chart. Now, what I will encourage encourage you to do is to go maximum two time frames below your uh, your higher time frame if you go three or four time frames like you analyze on the daily chart and instead of execute on the one hour chart you go on the 15 minute chart or you go on the five minute chart there is a lot of data that they consist these time frames imagine that you need 24 candles to form 24 candles on the hourly chart to form one candle of the daily chart then make them make these times four it means uh, 96 candles of the 15 minute chart to make the daily chart so Let's say that most of us, we let's say some, a trader that trades during the New York trading session, uh, that during the Asian session and during the London session, they are not active in the market. It means out of this 15 minute, um, 15 minute chart, there are at least maybe more, more, than, more than half of these candles already played out. So how can you combine all of this information to make your uh, your ideal to find your ideal setup on that um, on that market on this market condition? So just try to stick with, if you want with just two time frames apart. Now, what if some people they will may ask, okay, Theo, why don't we go from the daily and we execute on the four hour? Or we go from the daily to the four hour, do the analysis there, 
Then we go from the four hour to the one hour, find the level, some divergences, find some moving averages. And then we go on the 15 minute to find the order block. And then we go on the five minute to execute. Because every time you move from a time, time frame to time frame, you will read different information. Most of the times the daily is up and the four hour is up and then the 15 minute is down then you're trying to find the divergences you're trying to find intraday support it's a lot 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 of information to proceed at one point and some most of the times traders they get a couple of losing trades and then they start thinking ah well, i want to change my setup because what i'm doing is not really working okay guys so please understand this if you have any questions that you need to ask or if something I say it doesn't make sense to you and you want to ask me to discuss something, please feel free. You can send me an email. I put my email there. Feel free to send me an email. It's uh, uh, with no obligations and absolutely nothing. I'm more than happy to help you guys. The second rule, we must identify the current market conditions. Now, we gave a checklist, uh, maybe those who weren't in the webinar last time, uh, we had a webinar, why traders understand why traders fail in prop term challenges. So please uh, go and watch that webinar. It's on our YouTube channel and you will find the checklist that we gave for trending and arranging market on. So you have a map on how to identify like it's black and white, okay? Um, you don't need to overcomplicate the the stuff you just need to tick the boxes that's why i'm here i'm giving you just practical things to do in order to make your trading very simple and it, once you develop yourself as the trader that you are extremely comfortable to even to take 10 12 losing trades in a row if that occurred and keep doing the same thing then definitely you can approach trading from um from a different perspective the way you 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 want okay and the third thing we need to do is we have to check the price action if the price action on the higher time frame we are still on the higher time frame if this price action confirms the trend or the current market conditions or if it doesn't okay you will need this for the execution we will see it in the next slide and that's a crucial step price action on the time frame especially on the daily chart to uh to guide you when you're going to execute on the lower time frame it's essential guys okay let's move on to the next one so this is a recent example actually from uh yesterday this uh, candle developed here if i'm correct i think yeah it was yesterday with this bullish morabosus here so the 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 first um the first time frame correlation is because there are two types of time frame correlation okay the first type is when we identify that the uh, the higher time frame and the lower uh, and the lower time frame they are not in uh, in alignment or better to address it is the price action on the higher time frame is not in alignment with the market with the current market direction what do i mean by that look at this one that's the euro usd that's the daily chart now um i'm more of a technical trader uh, i don't like to be very discretionary in trading because then you somehow you get lost within your trading rules so i use trend lines as i uh, gave you the checklist on the previous webinar and if again if you haven't watched it please go and uh, watch it and you're going to see the checklist you can take screenshots you can write it down and take pictures whatever works for you so daily is down why because there is a down, not because I say it's down, but because there is a downward trend line and the price traders below it, there is this 50 period moving average that the price uh, still traded below it. And then we want to identify the area 
or what we call the sweet spot where that, that sweet spot it's a combination of different technical factors it's where we do expect the price to meet the significant amount of volume the the vast interest by traders to jump in the market and press the trigger and all of them they see the same uh, the same um, technical picture what we see on the chart and they will all agree with us that at this area we want to be a seller okay guys that's what we want to uh to do every single day in trading to find the price area where everyone or the majority of traders logically will agree that hey in this region we do expect the majority of trading activity to take the trade from this level um and and push it lower in this case okay so this area of confluence here it's significant why because of the trend line the moving average if you draw FIP from point a from this high to this low here you will see the 61.8 percent right at this level just close to this level actually so this area here it's important very very important then if you look on the left if you guys understand what order block orders are or bearish and golfing bullish and golfing uh blocks they are in, in in trading so at this point here we identify this kind of uh block the bearish engulfing so or order block also around here it was a significant rejection and then the price broke the downside aggressively it makes this level significant so by the price action there it's a significant level and by the technical factor so what we're going to do we can use the time frame correlation and go down to the hourly chart now if you want write this down how to execute the trade guys okay we execute the trade i at least i execute the trades all my trades based on order blocks or limit orders or price action there are different market conditions that they have to meet different criteria not everything is equal in trading not all market conditions are equal in trading the way we trade ranging markets is different with the way we trade trending markets the way we trade time frame correlation when the price action on the daily chart is not in alignment with the market direction and we expect reversal before the reversal occur on the daily chart we expect reversal on the lower time frame it requires different approach rather than the example we will look next okay so at this point here guys the hourly time frame this we are uh, we are observing this candle here okay sorry i don't put the meta trader and go to the to the actual chart it's going to be easier just to keep your focus on, on this screenshot okay you can check it later it's exactly that what happened yesterday and we were trying to trade on the um on the hourly time frame so at this point here the candle guys the candle was still under development the candle on the daily chart didn't close it was under development and this bullish marabozo here broke above these levels that's the first one that happened during the london session then going on uh, to the um, right at i think it was at 3 p.m local time that means 1 p.m gmt time so uh, at the open of the new york session another bullish marabozo here okay and it broke above this level here that's why it has that significant um significant uh body because it breaks a significant level and it penetrates through all these resistance so it needs um uh, much of momentum to break these levels okay at this point here it was the sweet spot now 
if we had to place, if we had to look on the left, so and the left, it's far left, okay? It's about three weeks data. To find an order block there, I think it's not the, the most ideal uh, and optimal way to trade this particular market. So we, it's, it's going to be hard to trade the order blocks here. If we will have placed limit orders, now, these limit orders at this point here, because we don't know if the market is going to go through, how much high it's going to go, and if it's going to come back. So we, we need to see some kind of price action confirmation. Are you with me, guys? Do you guys understand it? We need the price action confirmation to trade this time frame correlation environment when the daily or the higher time frame direction and the higher time frame price action is not confirmed yet. So we will have wait for this bearish and goffy. And uh, if you decided to take the trade, then you can place your, your trade. Okay. So that's the first case. The second case is when the higher time frame price action is in alignment with the market direction. That's an example uh, yesterday again on the pound New Zealand. This is the daily chart. The market was trending down, lower highs and lower lows. Okay, so the reversal occurred, the market follows through, another reversal here, it took out this pin bar, and then we were on the 20, we are here now. That's the today's one. So uh, let's give it a little bit. So we are, this candle is forming at this point here. So the price during the Asian session moved a little bit to the upside. It created guy, this order block here in the, during the Asian session. And the order blocks that are created during the Asian sessions are significant on the hourly time frame. I will, I will deviate a couple of webinars to explain you to break down everything you need about order blocks, okay? Because it's a solid trading strategy and I will walk you through every single aspect that you need to know. And uh, then prior to the London Open, the price went a little bit sideways, but it didn't really break outside of this order block. And then it created move upward and it melted down during the London session, creating another order block. That was the order block. I place the limit order here. Now, what is the difference between this example and the Euro US dollar we saw before? In this example here, the daily price action is confirmed that it's a reversal. So we are trading the daily price action to be continued. The room of opportunity is, of course, up to this swing low on the daily chart. So we can use this on our advantage. And coming back to the chart here, guys, we had prior to the New York session, the retracement. At this type of environment, we could have easily place a limit order with a tight stop loss, limit order below here with a stop loss above here or above there. It was about 40 pips, this point from this point. I was a little bit aggressive here and I placed my limit order at the close here and it just touched my um, my order, the, the, the ask line. It didn't trigger me in, so I didn't take this trade. And um, yeah, after that, day later so today that trade played out so it's much much easier in um in terms of order block trading to trade when the to trade the lower time frames when you confirm the price action on the higher time frame guys any questions so far uh, and the last example that i have for you here is the uh, a resistance trading that's one of the that's the trade I took last week, actually. So Euro Canadian dollar on the daily chart, price was hovering around this area of resistance and that was a weekly resistance. The price then it's below the 50 period moving average. So we are looking to short. The price action here, it was a dodgy price action, long leg dodgy below the 
the 50 period moving average, exponential moving average. So it's uh, everything screams that high probability can be developed to sell this market. Okay. So on the on the hourly time frame, it was a trade we took after the price touched in to this area of resistance that we marked from the daily chart and um, it failed you guys see that it failed to penetrate and and move, and move above it usually if the market it's going to tap into a significant area within the next two candles it will break to the upside or it's going to melt down one of these two happen if you're going to see the price action stay for a while here in my opinion and actually it's in my rules i scratch the tray and i look for the next one i if them imagine it's like a spring uh, if the spring get compressed a lot and it doesn't play out it doesn't expand then it, it's not working okay it needs to get fixed that's exactly that's the same thing with with the market so at this point here and uh, the, the market didn't really move anywhere the body of this candle was small smaller compared to this one here we were right at the new york trading session where the volume it's going to expand for the canadian dollar so high probability trade it's it doesn't mean it's a winning trade high probability trade says that hey trader if you see the price move away from this resistance within the next two candles then it's worth keeping the trade open so and i will give you a tip on how i manage the trade if i have to leave them over the night once the uh, price action moved away from the resistance because that was a two to one where exactly i placed the high here on the box you don't see it because we don't have the data of the previous candles it's exactly above those daily highs so i have this plus the spread okay always plus the spread and once the market moved two candles away from this one i just moved the stop loss to break even in order to uh to keep the trade for any uh, actually for overnight uh for over the night now some people they will may wonder guys because this is the last slide please please uh, if you have any question write them on the on the chat okay now some people they might wonder and they will ask me maybe why theo uh, this uh, this one here do you guys see it so you might ask why the trade didn't close the same day down there and it closed here it's because that was the um the first candle of the next day and the spread during the 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 server reset of the brokers the spreads they drastically expand they get wider and the the difference be the the bid and ask they didn't move below this low both of them that's why the trade didn't close here it went re it retraced here and then it closed during the new york session uh, the day after okay that's why you can see the price tested the same level but because the spread at this point a was much larger it didn't um it didn't fulfill the criteria to uh to close the trade uh, guys any questions from anyone is it um what we said i hope everything makes sense to you um honestly i hope you enjoyed the webinar as much as i did i really um i really believe that this brings some clarity it can add some value in your trading um, as i always say during the webinars the time is limited uh, I can't stay here and monologue for two, three, four, five, six, ten hours to give you all my knowledge and experience from trading. But I give you exactly what I do now 
Do I get losing trade? Absolutely, I get losing trade. I had a losing trade yesterday on the gold because I had my, I had my, um, I had the, how do you call it, the, um, the stop loss. The stop loss was uh, here on 40, 46 pips distance and the price touched my stop loss on 47 pips and it just turned around and it was a great trade afterwards. But what to do that's trading and we have to live with that, okay? But uh, if you ask me, would I replicate the same thing another 100 times, even if I get 20, 30, 50 trades in a row and everything will be losing, that will never happen. But because I know my statistics, it, it's not, I don't have that, uh, that averages, but I trust this plan, time frame correlation with these rules, that's exactly how I trade. And I will uh, encourage you if you want to try and see uh, how do you see yourself feeling comfortable while you're trading these setups okay uh, again if you have any questions feel free to send me an email or if you send us an email at the trading pit um, doesn't matter yeah uh, Alex so uh, guys I think I don't see any questions coming in uh, I think that's all from me today. I hope you, again, I hope you enjoyed the webinar. You had a great time. Myself and the whole team here at the Trading Pit, we would like to wish you to have a fantastic evening ahead. Um, and of course, we look forward to see you again next week on the next webinar. Thank you, everyone, and bye for now.